You know, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> it isn't that we're that good. And I'll be honest with you. It's that they're just so goddamn bad at it. It's <laughs> these, these, this <laughs> John. I'm I was, uh, I was in Kansas city. I did this guy's morning radio show. His name is Johnny Dare, and uh, he's going to zoom in any second. Oh, he the said guy that he, gave you the gifts. Yes, he's yeah, the one that gave, he us, gave us the, the sex uh, toys, the sex toy, the uh, fleshlight beer and babe the thing. ball washer, and the ball jacuzzi. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And he's told me before that in his house, he's got all kinds of crazy weird toys. Like he collects stuff. He's kind of like you know you guys with the Terracon or whatever. Like he loves going to like Comic Con type deals and and. Um, collecting things from TV shows and horror stuff and uh, and sexy stuff. So I'm hoping that when he zooms in, we can get a tour of his house. You know what I mean? Um, what's that? Yeah, he's here. He's, oh, waiting, he, he's, yeah, here he's in the room right now. So okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, go uh, let me just uh, set him up. The host of the Johnny Dare Morning Show for 98.9 The Rock all over the state of Kansas. He's statewide, baby. He is one of the station's more prominent figures, and he hosts the station's annual concert festival called Rock Fest, which has grown to become the biggest one-day concert event in the country. Please welcome. Who's Zooming? I'll tell you who's Zooming. Johnny Dare. And here he is right now joining me from Casa de Johnny Dare in Kansas City, I believe. How you doing, buddy? What are you doing, Mr. Reap? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. I appreciate you having me on when I was in Kansas City. Are you kidding me, man? It's uh, it's your family, brother. It, it's so good to see you. Like It's been so long since any of us have ever... I, I, you know, gotten back together, but I've never, I've never had such a weird period of isolation. Like doing this weird little Zoom call yeah. is 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 cool when you don't have to do it. When you had to do it, it wasn't fun at all. Yeah, I I love coming in the to your studio. I've been doing it for gosh, I don't know, ten years or something, off and uh, on. No, at least at yeah. least ten years. And uh, you know, you're just one of those guys. We became quick friends, and it was it was just easy. It's always been easy, yeah. Because you, you're always great for the show. You're always funny, and, but mostly, it's just it's good to see you. Likewise, in case there's people watching this who've never heard you in Kansas City, haven't listened to your podcast, I want to get the story, dude. How did you get started in this? You built an empire in the Midwest, and I like to know how it started. I, I don't know the story. Well, it's the weirdest thing. I never wanted to be in radio. I was a paramedic of all things. I hated radio because, you know, when I was growing up, all the bands I loved didn't get any airplay. I, was, I loved Metallica and Maiden and, and you know, just ACDC. And there wasn't, there wasn't active rock radio. So uh, I'll try to make it short. I, I, I moved out to L.A., lived in Hollywood and Yucca. Oh, wow. And that was a rough, you know, back in 89, 90. And I came back. I, I was going to be a fireman. And I. Uh, so I went to fire school and I also had to get an EMT, which I liked that EMT license. And then I went on to uh, get a paramedic license. Okay. And I was working in that field and working downtown KCK. And I loved it. I mean, you know, what's cooler? I mean, you're riding around in, a, in an ambulance, your your lights, and your sirens, you're saving people. It's, it's just, you know, when you're two things, I like helping people and I'm a show off. So it was perfect. <laughs> right. And, uh, and so, my buddy gets a job at a radio station. I'm working 2448s. And so that's what we did. I, I, I'd go down after I got off shift and hang out with him while I was off for 48 hours. And then eventually I ended up transitioning into this crazy radio thing. And, and I have no idea. I never wanted to do it. This is the only job I've ever had in morning radio. And that's it. I mean, it's the craziest goddamn thing you ever saw. Like, there's so, just no accounting so for you got So you got hooked in, in L.A. How did you get from L.A. to Kansas City? Well, I'm from Kansas City. Yeah, I know. But and like the, the, I, I grew up here and I moved out there and then it just, I was a hot tar roofer. And it just, you know, you kind of get to the end of the experience, right? I, I didn't go out there with any any dream. I just knew I didn't want to grow up and end up in the town I grew up in. Yeah. Uh, at that at that point, it was just, all I ever saw was birth, school, work, death. You know, it was just the yeah. same guys. And then whatever girl got, that they got pregnant, it's a girl they married. And then that was the end of them. Yeah. And I. I just didn't want to do it. So I ended up coming home and I love this city, mm -hmm. but I just knew I had to go see some different things, man. Cause you know, that's how, that's what happens. John is you just, man, if you don't get out of sight of your world, your yeah. microcosm, you don't learn anything. You don't travel. You don't know all, everybody's the same. You don't learn about the slide, this world, all the great things that has to offer. So 
I was yeah. just walking about. You've been in uh, Kansas City. Like every time I go there, everyone says if you want to sell any tickets, you got to go on Johnny Dare show. And you know that's your your market is gigantic, and you've built this amazing yeah. empire out there. You know what's crazy? Uh, it isn't that we're that good. And I'll be honest with you. It's that they're just so goddamn bad at it. It's <laughs> these, these disc jockeys. I'm, I'm, I hate disc jockeys. It's a, uh, you know, I'm not kidding you a little bit. It's just, you, you, I know you had to have experienced this. You'll go into a radio station as a, as a great talent. You've got this ability. And then the guy is so terrified. You're going to outshine him that he blows your act out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and and I'm like, what would you, how do you even not wrap your head around that? I go, if this guy comes on and he murders it for an hour and a half, guess where the ratings go? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the smartest move ever. I mean, um, like even Seinfeld would, would tell people like, I don't think I'm the funniest one on my show. I think Kramer's the funniest. I think uh, Costanza's funnier than me. I just... I started it and I just let all the, I, I reap the rewards. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's a, I mean, why do you think when you, I mean, how long we want, we, we did a break, I think a couple of weeks ago that went a solid hour. Yeah. Right. You know, because you're great and that makes the show great. That means to get the right ingredients and make it great. Uh, I totally agree, man. Tell me a little bit about some of the charity stuff I do. You do. I know you've been doing a, uh, like a rock fest thing uh, in uh, Kansas City area, and you give a lot of the proceeds to charity. Is that right? Well, we do a lot of different ones. We, we've done a Bikers for Babies was the biggest one in America for marching dimes for twenty years. Uh, you know, it runs some years around eight thousand motorcycles and about just under a million bucks a year for one day. Wow. Um, we do a, uh, every year a thing called Hope for the Holidays, where we take um, emails or letters um, that because it's, it's kind of a, a weird thing for radio to do. So I have to explain this. It started when we answered uh, a letter from Santa. One of the guys in the show, his mom worked at the post office. And so she took this letter from Santa. There was a bunch of them. And there were, we realized they were adults simply writing their hearts down, their thoughts down. One lady's daughter was moving away to college. She was divorced. And she had read a letter to Santa about how much she was going to miss her daughter. She was an empty nester. And she just, she wishes she continued on with the piano. She used to love playing the piano. So without her knowing, we bought a piano. And I dressed two of these jackholes up in the morning show in the little elf suits and rang her doorbell. And instead of this ha ha moment, she just, it was the most honest tears of joy. Wow. And that's what started at 27 years ago. So we started to go, man, what happens to these people when they have bald tires and they don't have the money and then their tires go bad and they can't get to work. When they can't go to work, they can't pay their mortgage. They can't pay their mortgage. They become homeless. And these are the dominoes we all grew up with that one falls and you're just ass out. Yeah. So that's that's how it started. There's nothing we won't do from buying a, a little girl who's got um, alopecia, yeah. uh, a new wig, to flying home a vet to see his mom. Wow. Uh, we, cover, we cover all those vets. So that's hope for the holidays. And, hope uh, for the holidays. So okay. Wow. Dude, I'm loving your background. This is your place. You got all kinds of good stuff hanging out out there. I can tell you love, um, you probably love science fiction or, or like hor horror movies. Oh, no, that's my thing here. Look at that guy. Oh, here we go. What is that? That is lovingly known as Bob Zombie. He is a six-foot-tall zombie who just hangs out in the living room. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Uh, haunt Show, St. Louis. Oh, wow. uh, in fact, actually, next month is a haunt show in St. Louis. It's called the Trans World Haunt Show. Oh, no, I'm, I'm a child. Here's Alice. Oh, yeah. We got Alice Cooper. Yeah. Do you I see your, who some, doesn't oh, have it? Yeah, what is that? That's a dragon. <laughs> yeah. He's he's currently out of uh he's out of smoke, but he actually blows fog out of his out of his mouth. Dude, your place is amazing. It's like a dang museum in there. Is that like um evil Knievel behind you? It is. That's an evil Knievel autograph jumpsuit. Whoa, where did you get that? Uh, I acquired that years ago. And then I'm an evil Knievel weirdo. So there's an autographed picture. Here's an autographed bobblehead. Holy and then crap. this jacket was given to me by Henry Winkler. And it's an original Fonzie jacket. Not, oh, my gosh. That is going to be worth some money, dude. Yeah, but, you know, it's one of those things like I, I think Henry Winkler is the kindest, most yeah. incredibly good human being 
Uh, he and, of course, the late Bob Saget were two of just the people I, I, I love most in this world. Yeah. And uh, Henry is just it's been a great dude. But, yeah, no, I love collecting stuff, man. It's It just gets weird as can be. Hey, it's me again. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked that. If you did, you, uh, you should check out the entire episode. It's a blast. And then if you're going to do that, you might as well subscribe. And then, you know, if you're going to subscribe, you might as well hit the notification bell. All right? And, uh, and know that I love you. <laughs>